everybody. This is Raul with Bass Musician Magazine. And today we have the great honor and pleasure of having a chance to chat with Dimitri Farugias. Correct. And Dimitri is the bassist for a group, a bicoastal group uh, called Faulkner. And they've got all kinds of exciting stuff going on. So now's a perfect time to get a chance to, to chat. Um, let's start from the beginning, Dimitri, so our readers can get to know you a little better. Tell us about yourself. How did you get started with bass? First of all, Raul, thank you for having me. Um, it's, a, it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be interviewed by you and uh, Bass Musician Magazine. So thank you. Um, I started playing bass at 13. That's when I played my first show. Uh, with a band back in my um, hometown, small town northwest of uh, Athens, Greece. Uh, uh, the name of it is Yanina. No reason for you to know it at this point, but uh, <laughs> um, I, uh, I joined uh, a band with a few friends and um, I, I played a show. I was in junior high. We did a little... Uh, we did a little thing uh, with a few other bands at this small theater, and um, I remember that the feeling that I had was incredible, and somehow it, it made perfect sense to me that, okay, this is, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> this is it. And how did you, from, from there, and, and I could always go into Greek music because I'm a huge fan of bouzouki music. Now that, oh, yeah. <laughs> that great whole other whole other kind of a thread, but oh. let's let's carry on with you. From from there, you just stayed stayed with it. You came from Greece to the states. Correct. Yes, I uh, I finished uh, I finished high school in Greece, and then I I, I moved uh, straight to LA from there, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I kept playing music. Um, just, uh, just as a hobby at the time, I, I, I was with my band back in Greece. And then when I moved to the States, I, uh, just kind of bounced around a little bit, playing around with some friends just to keep my, you know, my chops going, um, and just practicing a little bit on my own. And then eventually, um, I ended up joining, uh, another LA, LA based, uh, band, uh, for a little bit. That was before, um, Faulkner, uh, after I had finished my, um, studies at, at USC. And uh, after that, I went to uh, the Musicians uh, Institute, MI, in Hollywood, which is really when I really got back into it. Up until that point, I was just like, you know, trying to stay afloat and, and, and uh, keep playing here and there. But uh, once I got back into it, I got really serious, especially with, uh, with MI. And I you know, ended up you know, practicing you know, 8, 10, 11 hours a day and uh, having a blast. Um, I was uh, really fortunate throughout my life since I started playing to have um, um, excellent teachers, starting back from, from Greece. Mm -hmm. um, my first music teacher was um, uh, actually my uncle, who is a classical guitar player. Oh, and nice. uh, at, actually at age 11, that was technically my first instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, he showed me around the instrument and he started you know, teaching me how to read music. and. Uh, Wonderful, wonderful uh, man by the name of uh, Christos Tasoulas, and uh, and then once I got into bass, uh, again I was so fortunate. Um, your first teacher is is so important and, and really uh, uh, sets the stage for for the rest of your life in, in terms of uh, falling in love with the instrument and giving you the proper the proper foundation uh, to excel. Um, so. In that regard, I, I, I've always been so lucky. So my first bass teacher was uh, a guy named Vangelis uh, Bulutsis, and uh, I can't thank him enough for uh, making me fall in love with the instrument even more. Um, he really taught me so much. We kept going with reading, technique, theory, ear training. I mean, he covered he covered everything. And um, again, I, I can't thank him enough. Um, with regards to uh, MI, again, I had a I had a blast, and I, I was fortunate enough to study under under really good people um, such as uh, Potter Smith, um, uh, Maurice Verloop, Alexis Kloretsky, Dave Keith, Christopher Maloney, um, all all great great people and uh, great teachers. Um, I really left that school, um, and uh, I don't know. I felt that I was uh, I was so much better for for having done so. 
Gotcha. Well, and it's it answers a question we get often when people are asking, how do I go about getting started with this? And I often will just tell them, get a teacher, get some a real person, because you really need to have somebody that will give you some feedback and help you not get into terrible habits and do some of the right things and put the emphasis in the areas that you need to work on, like reading music. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a very th great thing. Granted, in popular music, you may not use it an awful lot, but um, as I talk to more and more um, musicians, even with some of the a lot of the prog rock, a lot of it is written out, and so yeah, the more complicated the piece, having that as as a tool in your belt is excellent. Absolutely, I absolutely agree with that. And so. From there, you, you joined Faulkner, and again, right now you're in New York, but I understand a lot of them are still in California. Well, we, we go back and forth a lot. Um, uh, the, the term bicoastal is, is uh, no accident. We're usually in New York, if not once a week, once every two weeks. Um, our, um, our front man uh, has roots there. Uh, he spent many years of his life there. Our... Uh, our team is based out of New York, so we end up going there quite often. We have a great relationship with the city, and uh, we love love spending time and, and performing there and recording everything. We, we just love love going there. Nice. And the genre of music, I know it's sometimes they feel they have to peg a group's music in some box, so they've got Faulkner in alternative rock. Yeah, I would, I would say so. I would agree with that. Um, it's um, it's definitely uh, uh, has it definitely has a, a base in, in in popular music, but mm -hmm. definitely leans towards um, alternative. Uh, the popular music side of it will fall under, I guess, our pop melodies. You know, they're they're uh, I guess uh, easy to to sing along, easy to get to get into. Um, they're you know, definitely big hooks there. Uh, we, we don't shy away from that. We're, we're all about having a, a good, solid melody that, that people can, can sing along to. Um, and I guess the alternative part of it will, will comes down to um, uh, fusing three decades of, of music from 70s punk to 80s pop and then 90s um, hip hop. Gotcha. And listening to some of it, I almost got a little bit, it gave me kind of a reggae feel with... There's some of that in there too, yeah, especially yeah. with the, you know, yeah, you got the Caribbean vibe, especially with uh, the song Revolutionary. Our, exactly. Our, our yeah, definitely, definitely. That was, uh, we had a lot of fun putting that song together and uh, we also had a great time uh, shooting the video for it. We, mm -hmm. uh, we went to uh, Kauai. And uh, spent a few days there to shoot it. We uh, we went into the uh, Jurassic Waterfalls where Spielberg shot the the first uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. We got an awesome helicopter ride there, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a great crew and a great team, and uh, we had a blast. And we we couldn't be happier with the uh, the end result. It came out great. Love it. Got you. And and staying on the topic of Faulkner, what I understand you guys have some big projects. In the future, and also I don't want to skip because you just there was a collaboration with New York City Anthem. New York Anthem, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, that was a, a collaboration we did with uh, RZA from uh, the Wu Tang Clan, you know, the the Abbott, mm -hmm. um, and that was that was just a just an amazing experience. Uh, we're all uh, huge hip hop fans. Uh, I personally melted thirty six chambers. Uh, uh, in my CD player, uh, I'm dating myself, uh, and um, and uh, it was it was amazing. We ended up doing it at uh, Rick Rubin's uh, Shangri La out in uh, Malibu, which uh, up until a few years ago was uh, Bob Dylan's house, and uh, his pool table still there. His uh, tour bus from from the 70s is in the the backyard, and uh, we spend uh, we spend a, a few good days in there. Um, we had a great time. He uh, he really brought his A game. He was so cool. Um, he's uh, one of the most intelligent human beings I've ever met. Um, the man really dropped some some major wisdom on us with regards to music, uh, the arts in general, philosophy, math. He's just so well versed in 
in so many different topics and um, I don't know we couldn't we couldn't be happier he originally signed on to to produce it and uh, when we were in the studio he really got into it and uh, decided to just go in the booth and started freestyling nice. and uh, we, were, we were very pleasantly surprised gotcha and what's coming in the future uh, we right now we have the the EP out called Revanches on all the digital uh, platforms, uh, Spotify, iTunes, etc. And uh, you can um, you can also um, look us up on our social media at Faulkner Music to get more music there. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, we have the full album coming out uh, sometime during the first quarter of um, of uh, two, 2017. Sorry. And we can't wait. We have, uh, it's in the can. Uh, we are currently wor- working on another uh, collaboration, which unfortunately I can't talk about it yet. Uh, but it's, we're very excited about it. Um, it's, it's being worked on as we, uh, as we speak right now. And uh, we can't wait to announce it and we can't wait to uh, put it out there. All I'm going to say is that uh, it's going to have some uh, Detroit flavor. Excellent. Well, it's, it's always good to leave them wanting more so people will hear this and go, hey, I better be paying attention because something is, yep. is coming. Yep. So that's good. Also, I was going to ask, it's always interesting band names. Where did Faulkner come from? Because, you know, that's, so that's That's an interesting question. Uh, uh, the... Every band member has kind of like its own little uh, version of its of its origin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for now, let's say that it was um, it was uh, given to our uh, uh, our frontman Lucas Asher uh, from a shaman. Okay. Yeah. That's that 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 works for me. It, well, it goes it goes deep. I wild. It, you know, it's it's kind of wild because um, having been in a few groups myself and, and looking back, a lot of them had terrible names that <laughs> we we looked at and we went, oh man, what were we thinking? You know, and and certainly some of them were sign of the times. You know, if you look back to the late sixties. And, and we were trying to pick out names and we entertained things like the Cinnamon Fog, um, you know, kind of psychedelic let's put things together that don't make an awful lot of sense. And we ended up with The Incredibles, which was a bad name as it was. Um, the time. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. You know, and, and again, kind of in that, in that time frame it wasn't a terrible thing but getting away from that tell us a little bit about your gear what are you playing what what what's your i uh first and foremost i'm i'm a, I'm a fender guy okay. um i have i've tried so many different instruments and i just cannot get away from my fenders um it's i just it's hard for me to feel the need to switch uh, I feel so complete personally, um, uh, sound wise and feel wise, uh, with my, with my J and, and, and my P, um, it's, it, it sounds undeniable. I, I can't, I can't mess with it. I just can't, uh, not that I object to ever using anything else or, you know, if there's a specific recording session that calls for something different then I'm certainly open to it. Um, but through all the years that I've been playing, I always find myself using uh, mainly my uh, my uh, Mexi Fender J. It's just like it's beautiful. It sounds it sounds great. Um, and um, the only thing I, I did to the only uh, changes I made on it was um, I uh, I put a badass bridge on it mm-hmm. and uh, I switched the the nut to uh, a bone instead of plastic. Um, and that was it, but uh, I can't, I'm, I, I, I love it. I, I, it's so hard for me to just like, I feel like I'm cheating. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's weird. And, uh, I also have a, a, a beautiful, uh, uh, Roger Waters, uh, P, uh, reissue. Mm-hmm. 
that my uh, my dear brother gave me as a gift uh, a few years ago for my birthday, and I, I love him for it. Uh, and I, I also use that, but not as often as my um, as my J. Well, and it's interesting because when it comes to basses, and, and as I've chatted with a few musicians, when they find one that they love a lot, they even get to a point where they're kind of protective about taking it on tour because they're worried that something will happen to it. And so um, sometimes it's those oldie but goodies that, you know, it's like this was just right for me and I'm so scared that something is, is going to happen. And I was chatting with one of the musicians from Cirque, and they're touring when they were in the Dominican Republic. They uh, they broke uh, the scroll off of the head of his upright bass, and and he's like, oh, you know, and it's like, how could they? How could they do this? This is terrible. Painful. Painful. Massively. But uh, and amplification wise, what are you? I. Uh, I Again, I like to to stick with uh, SVTs okay. for for the most part. Amp, I, I think the perfect marriage for me is is a Fender J and a, and a SVT with an eight by ten. Gotcha. Um, it, again, undeniable. It's undeniable. It will always come through for you. It will always sound amazing. Um, you will get as much low end as you need. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to be able to cut through everything with it. Uh, it's going to be crisp. It's going to be uh, massive. Um, so yeah, I try to stick, I try to stick to that, that combination of my Fender J and uh, the Nampeg SPT classic. Um, again, hard again, open to, to trying other stuff. And I have in the past, but usually I find myself just using that. Absolutely. Well, what's what's important is you find your voice and you find what works for you. Absolutely. And uh, how about pedals? You running? I don't. No. So straight up I, sound. Straight. Yeah. Nice. I, I clean. Yeah. I uh, Faulkner. There's so many different layers with our our synths, and uh, uh, we one of our primary instruments is 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 a Moog. Mm -hmm. So where I get to double up with it, a lot of the bass lines on the on the album are being doubled by the Moog and the, and, and the bass. So there's a, just a huge low end going on. Um, so there's really you got you got the distortion from the Moog going on. So there's really no need for me to use any distortion. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I don't I don't I don't really mess around with pedals. That's just a you know a bottomless pit. Yeah, and, uh, I uh, I never never got into. And, and you know, it's, there's, it's all a question of taste and I don't think there's a wrong choice when it comes to this. Um, certainly there are some musicians that depending on the kind of music they're playing, they find that a pedal is useful, but I would say probably the lion's share have not only gone with just the straight sound of their instrument and their amplifier, but they uh, usually, even in setting up the EQ on their amp, it's just all straight up. I mean, it's just it's just the sound. It's just, I just yeah. want you to hear what I got coming out of here, you know? And, you know, people forget that they can really manipulate the sound with their fingers and, and different kinds of picks and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So you, you can really EQ yourself you know, just by, by your technique and how, how you use the instrument. Gotcha. And live touring, are, are you guys going to be out where people can catch you uh, performing live? Yes. Uh, we are uh, at Maxwell's in New Jersey tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, Rocket Town, Nashville, uh, Saturday, and uh, House of Blues, uh, Cleveland, Ohio on Sunday. And that concludes our little uh, little run, but we go back to New York. I think the the week after, gotcha, uh, for for a few more shows. But for now, we got those three coming up, and um, and much more to come. Again, for all or all, all the people that want to check us out and follow us, uh, they can go on FaulknerOfficial.com and uh, check out all of our tour dates. Well, that was actually going to be my last question: is where they should go to look. So that is that is perfect. Well, Dimitri, as, as always, it's always a joy to have an opportunity to chat with one of the members of our base community. 
and hear what's working and what's going on and all the excitement. I, I think one of the key important things and one of the message we have here at Bass Musician Magazine is the the thing, it's about the music and it's about the musicians themselves and knowing each other and sharing the experience and kind of motivating each other in the process because I'm hoping that people hear your story and they go, wow, I, I want to do that. Or there could be a young person that might be considering and going, well, maybe I could go to Musicians Institute or something, you know, so all kinds I of things. I encourage it. I encourage it. Just follow it. Just do it. There you go. Well, thanks again, folks. You've heard Dimitri chatting with us here on Bass Musician Magazine. Thank you for having me. Thank you.